During his forced exile, Mehmed prepared a detailed plan to deal with the politicized and unruly elements within the military. In order to control the Janissary Corps more completely and to ensure their loyalty, he reorganized their organizational structure and introduced the largest palace guard unit, the Sekban Houndkeepers, into the corps. The Sekbans became an integral part of the corps in a short time, but at the same time preserved their separate identity and name. Their organizational structure and command and control system of the Janissary Corps changed dramatically after the addition of the Sekban units, which was the outcome of a deliberate decision to reinforce the loyalty of the corps to the Sultan. However, in a relatively short time, the loyalty of the corps became a problematic one once again. Sultan Bayezid II discovered that a particular commander of the Sekban units, the Sekban Basha, was involved in a conspiracy against him. He immediately sacked him and changed the policy of assigning the Sekban Basha to the post of the Yenicheri Arasa, the commander-in-chief of the Janissary Corps. He decided to assign the Arasa from the household in order to be sure of the loyalty of the corps. This assignment policy continued without this assignment policy continued without change until 1641, and thereafter, the Ars were assigned from within the core. Following his father's, Mehmed II's approach, Bayezid founded the Ar Berlikleri, the commander's own regiments, as a personal retinue of the Ar, in order to give him power and leverage within the core. After these two drastic changes, the structure of the corps became stable and did not change except that the numbers of regiments continued to rise until the end of the 16th century. The final number of regiments were 101 Jemat or Yaya Ortas, 61 Ara Berdeklere and 34 Sekban Ortas. Although the number of regiments then stabilized, the personnel strength the corps continued to rise from 8,000 to 10,000 during the mid 16th century to 13,000 in the 1560s and growing to over 35,000 at the end of the 16th century. This unintended rise is understandable when taking into account the increasing need for the trained infantry and their successful introduction and the use of firearms by Janissaries. Originally, the entire corps was organized as a single regiment, but later, with the increase in strength, each of the autos became a separate regiment with distinctive heraldries and traditions until the men were very proud of their respective regiments and they generally identified themselves with the units so much that each regiment became something of a great family. Most of the men tattooed the symbols of the units on their shoulders. Janissary units or autars all developed unique insignia which they would wear in the form of tattoos. We also have the Jemart or infantry symbols. First, we have the first autar which was commanded by the Kukahyasa, who also commanded the Bostanji or gardeners, primarily responsible for the maintenance of the 70 imperial estates and all of the coastline of Istanbul. The symbol of the first was a camel, since it was originally a camel driver unit that escorted the baggage train for marching army. Nominally, the Sultan is also part of the first as a Janissary soldier. The 14th known as the Hasiki, since the Hasiki guards were recruited from it. The 71st, known as the Samsunjus, or Mastiff Keepers, originally part of the Sultan's hunting establishment. Some of the Arabolikleli are 5th, commanded by the provost of the Janissary, the 56th, a policing unit that was stationed around the Golden Horn, and Sekban divisions including the 18th, known as the Secretaries, possibly due to being scribes and clerks before being made a part of the Janissary Corps as a whole, and the 33rd, the Huntsman, commanded by the Hunt Master of the Sultan, stationed near the Black Sea in summer. Another symbol of Janissary prestige and identification was their distinctive uniforms. Initially, their distinctive high white bonnets were their signature, but later on detailed uniform regulations were put into use that clearly identified all different uniforms of the Janissaries and other Kapukula Corps. Obviously, the Ottoman government understood the importance of uniforms in order to promote in order to promote the Ilan, raise morale and discipline, and for the practical raise morale and discipline and for the practical application of differentiating friend and foe. Moreover, 
the Ottomans were well ahead of their counterparts by standardizing uniforms 200 years earlier than others. The government would issue uniforms regularly and including an overcoat and shoes or the monetary value of it to each soldier. The uniforms were simple but functional and sturdy. The colors of the uniforms and shoes showed the status, such as yellow shoes for high-ranking officers, black for junior officers and red for soldiers. A variety of headgear was also instrumental in establishing rank, unit and merit, such as awarding heroic soldiers with distinctive turbans. They also developed a system of flags, which was very different to their European counterparts. The main banner was called the Imam Ezam, which was inscribed with the text that was given to you at the beginning of this video. Tradition states that Orhan also gave him a red flag with a white crescent, which later on the white star was added after the conquest of Istanbul. However, they used many symbols, stars, suns, daggers, geometric shapes, the hand of Fatima, and the double-bladed sword of Ali. Interestingly, the most revered object of the entire Janissary Corps was the sacred cauldrons, the Kazani Sherif. The cauldrons of each regiment were more sacred than their respective standards or flags. The Kazan or cauldron symbolized two things. It emphasized the importance of food. The Sultan provided the daily single meal of bulgul, a palau male of cracked wheat. Also, it also emphasized their close relationship to Haji Pektash Vili, the founding dervish of their order. This along with the wooden spoon that was worn on the headgear and the kitchen-based ranking system of junior officers emphasized the importance of the Sultan's meal given to them. The Kazan was so important that if it was lost in battle, it brought great shame to the unit in the same sense of the golden eagles of ancient Rome. When the Kazan was carried in parade, it was done in respectful silence. To tip the Kazan over signaled mutiny to the Sultan and unhappiness of what was given to them. To take refuge near was sanctuary and in battle. It was a rallying point and if lost, it disgraced the entire regiment.